What's up guys, welcome to another Blacklist video and today we're going to take a look at the latest speed competition that happened in England during the Underground Project Volume 6, if, I, if I'm correct, which was held in Rotterdam, England at the Nova City Center and the three podium was at the third place Joe Endo, at the second place Max Barker and at the first place Eric Moore. And while Max Barker finished second, we are going to analyze the run of Eric and the run of Joseph. The reason for that is that the people who were the fastest were Joseph and Eric, but unfortunately Joseph didn't get the win because he had a fail, he failed the jump, but his game plan was probably the best out of everyone. So without further ado, let's jump right into the commentary. Let's go! For the first run we have Joe Endo on the right and Eric Moore on the left. As you're going to see the run is pretty similar, almost identical up to certain points. So you have a few difference, here is the first big difference. We're going to look at the slow motion and here is the second big difference. Alright, let's look at this in slow-mo. Starting off with Skong Kong to speed step out, they are both using their hands in order to change direction, using the bars, pretty much the same stuff really. Here we're going to have the first difference that's going to make Endo a little bit ahead of Eric. So after the speed vault, is they are both going to skip on the box and going onto slanted wall and you can see here that Joe's foot is a little bit higher on the platform than Eric's foot. That will allow Joe to keep going forward and to keep his speed up, to keep accelerating. And here is the second big difference. You see how Joe is only using his left arm on the box whereas Eric is using both of his arm, doing some kind of a weird lazy vault that makes his center of gravity backward. The problem with Eric's technique is that he has to pull his center of mass in front again whereas Joe just keeps his center of mass in front and that, that allows him to keep his speed and to keep the momentum flowing. That's what you want. And here is the turning point that's going to take the victory away from Joe. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Okay, jokes aside, let's look at why Joe tried to do this big jump. The reason why Joe tried to do this big jump was because if he would have done it, he would have been so much ahead, probably a good second ahead of Eric. We can see in this clip that Eric was also able to do this jump. In my opinion, the reason why Eric chose not to do it in his um, full run is because the fatigue adds up over time. In speedrunning, you're not it's not like long course, it's like 15 second course, 20 second course, 25 second course. But when you have to do a big jump at the end of your course, it's a big gamble. It's a big big gamble. If your skill is really high like Joe, you, you should go for it, but you need to accept the fact that you might also not be able to do it. But that's how, that's how you win in a spectacular fashion, is when you're taking the big difficult route and you execute it perfectly. So that's what Joe tried to do. Eric probably decided to not do it afterwards because he knew that it was going to be sketchy to try to do it. And he just went for the wall run instead. So GG to both of these guys for their first run. Let's now look at the second run. The second run as the first one was a really close call. We have a few differences here and there that makes it that Joe was at the start a little bit faster but at the end of his course is going to stumble on the box and that little mistake is going to cost him the victory. It's not much but it's always like so small. The smallest mistake and you're out. It's very interesting. Let's look at this in slow-mo. And the first difference is that Joe is going to stride the bar and Eric is going to pre the bar. You want to stride, stride will always be faster than a pre, except in very few cases when you cannot really stride. Here Joe is able to be ahead of Eric because he's able to stride those blocks a little bit faster. They're pretty much doing the same thing here up until this point right here. Joe is going to stride the box and Eric is going to pre the box. So why stride is faster? Stride is faster because you can use your back leg in order to generate momentum after you land. The problem with stride is that it requires that you're generating a lot more power. Eric decides to dash vault the box and Joe, and Joe decides to conk the box. And here we have a very interesting choice which I'm still debating to know which one is faster. As you see, 
Eric decides to jump straight to the bar and land on the floor whereas Joe decides to walk on the bar and then goes for the floor so I'm thinking that Eric's technique is a bit faster because he seems to catch up and here is the latest part where Joe is going to be a bit too close from the wall for his Kong and so he's not gonna be able to Kong to dive Kong whereas Eric just smoothly goes under the bar and go up the wall and then dive Kong and press the button so a very close call uh, Joe made a small mistake but he chose to take the hardest path so GG to him, GG to both of these guys, they did an awesome job, GG to everyone who competed and thank you guys so much for watching that video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe, share the video if you liked it, let us know what you would like to see next and we're just thrilled for the year to come, there's a lot that's gonna happen in the parkour world, people are becoming stronger every year and it's just a beautiful community that we have. Keep it real guys, stay safe, train hard, peace, big bisous.